How long is the runway you're departing on? Early on in ground school, you learn where the sources of information on runway lengths are, and it's usually one definite number. This is runway 12 at Opalaka in Miami. Let's consider one of those sources of information, the taxiway diagram. Looking at runway 12, we see its length is listed as 6,800 feet. Also, if we look at an approach plate for the runway, the ILS, we see on the airport diagram the length of 6,800 feet again listed out. But this isn't the end of the story. There's an inverted D symbol on the top of this chart, which means that runway declared distance information is available for runway 12. Let's take a look at the runway and figure out what's happening. Zooming into the very beginning, we'll analyze going from left to right. First, there's the section with the yellow chevrons, the stopway. No taxi takeoff or landing operations happen here. It's for runway overruns. Next is the area with several white arrows. This is the displaced threshold. Takeoffs can start from the beginning of here, but no landings can be made on the displaced threshold. The single white vertical bar is the runway threshold where landings can be made. Moving to the other end of the runway, we see the other runway threshold, followed by another stopway, the area with a few yellow chevrons. Finally, there's a flat grassy portion to the right of the stopway. There's no markings on it, but it's what's considered a clear way. More on that in a sec. So moving left to right, in other words, the direction of travel when we're landing or departing on this runway, we have the stopway, then the displaced threshold, then the runway itself, then the opposite stopway, and a flat area known as the clearway. The clearway is a little extra room at the opposite end of the runway to give aircraft a bit more space to clear an obstacle on their climb out. It needs to meet certain parameters, such as being at least 500 feet wide and having minimal or no upslope or obstacles. Here's that area at Opalaka. Now, the declared distances for this runway are listed in the chart supplement for the airport. One of these is called the Takeoff Distance Available, or TOTA. It's listed as 7,800 feet. TOTA is the total obstacle-free runway distance that's available for takeoff. This includes the stopway and the clearway at the end of the runway. Our takeoff run starts at the beginning of the displaced threshold, and as we climb out, our obstacle-free distance goes the length of the runway, stopway, and clearway. So we'll move that down to start diagramming these distances out. The next declared distance is called the Accelerate Stop Distance Available, ASDA. This is the distance you can use on the takeoff run, then after rejecting on the deceleration and stop without overrunning. This available distance starts at the beginning of the displaced threshold again, runs the length of the runway, and includes the stopway at the opposite end, which is there for emergencies to prevent an overrun. It doesn't include the clearway. That's just an extra area free of obstacles for the climb out. It's not for getting the aircraft stopped. It's just grass. So the ASTA runs a bit shorter than the TOTA here. The next distance is called the takeoff run available, TORA. Unlike the accelerate stop distance, this is just how much runway you have under normal circumstances to use up on your takeoff. It's not anticipating you have to close the throttle and hit the brakes. It's saying this is how much pavement you have to actually run down. It moves again from the beginning of the displaced threshold to the opposite threshold. It doesn't include the stopway or clearway. If there were a displaced threshold on the opposite side, it would include that though, as that's runway available for takeoff. The last distance is for landing. It's the LDA. Landings can't be accomplished on the displaced threshold, so it doesn't start there, but at the actual runway threshold and runs to the opposite threshold. And again, would include the displaced threshold too on the opposite side if it were there. So those are our four runway declared distances diagrammed out. Here's how they might change for different runways. Without a clearway, the TOTA shrinks down to stop at the end of the stopway, the same as the TORA. Getting rid of the stopway at the departure end doesn't affect any of these distances because it's not useful for any operations on runway 12, even an emergency overrun. Getting rid of the displaced threshold on 12 shrinks the TORA, ASDA, and TOTA alike, and getting rid of the opposite stopway brings the ASDA down to the other takeoff distances. And finally, adding a displaced threshold on the opposite end extends all the takeoff and landing distances. Available runway information is crucial for doing performance calculations as the length of runway means different things depending on if you're talking about takeoff, landing, rejected landings, or clearing obstacles. Have a look at these on your next planning flight and check out IFR Ground School today by checking the link at the bottom left of the screen or the link in the description.